organic mic here. All right, I just pretty much gave up on using my uh, smartphone as a video recorder. And if you look at the the lens, that thing is pretty small anyway. But it's convenient and it's easy to upload because I would just connect to my local network and it would upload real quick. But <clears throat> I'm back to the better looking video of the uh, HD recorder, but I'm not recording in HD just to keep the file size down. So the more I talk, the longer the file will be. So I guess I should get to what I need to do here. This is going to be like part two of it's springtime in Ogden, Texas, but here's what I wanted to show you. Um, what's funny is I just spent 10 to 15 minutes recording what I wanted to record and I figured out that the button didn't press right. So, and that just great. So what I've discovered uh, last year, or early in the year, or actually, I can't remember, late in the season, I took some clippings off my apple trees and stabbed them all around the tank in the sand, and um, they started taking throughout the drought because they were wicking the water up uh, from the tank. So yesterday, I spent a lot of time right along these little sandy parts stabbing little uh, different types of bushes and trees this is a rosa sharon um that's a rosa sharon it's hard to see um, that's a cat there's some dewberries but down there is a, a pear tree and there's a another cat waiting for a fish they got a hard light and if you look around here down in these little ravines here. That's a um, plum tree. Um, and this, there's an orange tree. My, uh, you know, I'm just trimming my trees and instead of, when I trim them, instead of throwing them away, um, I'm going to stab them in the sand and see what it takes. What do I have to lose, right? This looks like a plum and that's orange. Satsumi orange. I think I said that right. There's another plum. That's a pear. And I know I have these close together, but, um, you know, I don't think they're going to take. So whatever takes, that's probably going to be a lot further apart because I don't think they're all going to take. But if they do, great. That's a pair. It's a little windy out here. There's a pair. There's another one. Now, this pair, I did this one yesterday with just like these other ones over here. And it looks pretty, you know, alive. So I think that one's going to take. And you go along here, and this is a mulberry I got from Brad. Um, this is another mulberry I got from Brad, and it looks like it's going to take. And I think I got these a week ago. I stabbed them in the wet ground up in the front yard, and I forgot about them. So I found them again, reclipped the ends off, stabbed them in the ground, and I think they're going to make it. So if that's that makes it... That's going to be pretty exciting because that mulberry tree is really good uh, food for wildlife. You know, I have a lot of wild ducks that come in here and birds. And what I can't eat, uh, they will definitely eat. I don't know if fish eat it. And that's, <laughs> this will be interesting. I clipped a part that was blooming off of a pear tree. And it's still trying to bloom. So there's another pear tree. And you walk along here. And this is what I did, uh, I guess about six months ago. This is the apple trees that I stabbed in. And they're starting to pop out now. You can't really see it, but trust me. Uh, let me go to one that has leaves on it. There we go. Uh, let's see if you can see that. Let me give you a... See the leaves popping out of that bud? It's hard to see. Anyway, <clears throat> so I did that all along all along here but another thing i wanted to show you that i previously recorded and figured out that my recorder wasn't on is this was last year's uh pickle bed i call it pickle bed it had we planted some uh dill and cucumbers and look at what popped up all these dill plants look at them dill dill see all of them and they look healthy look at that that dark green look to them and then where they're really close together they have this reddish tinge to them 
Uh, they're kind of starving for nutrients, I'm sure. They're struggling a little bit, but this is my wild dill patch. None of the cucumbers came up because the, they didn't season out. They didn't, they didn't mature enough for the seeds to season out. But these dill, they were growing in a harsh environment last year. This was a burn patch that I had, so I, I turned it into a garden. And believe it or not, this there was no weeds in here. And uh, this is what came back the next year, though. So I'm going to get in here and weed and and uh, keep this dill patch going. And I'm glad to see flowers this year. This is something I didn't see last year. And look at all these dewberries. Everywhere you walk, look at the color of these flowers. That's not dewberry, but look at these guys. And these things are popping up everywhere. Here's something I wanted to show you real quick. I want to keep this video about 10 minutes to see what the file size is going to be. This is 640 by 480 at 60 frames per second instead of the HD stuff I was doing before. Here's some wild, or not wild, some red onions that I planted last year that survived. This was all nicely plowed and I had rows and everything. And uh, when the drought hit, it was a disaster. I mean, I say when it hit, it was just a progressive thing. I planted all these fruit trees last year. All those died, I lost about 10 there. But here's what's interesting. I got this from my mom. This is a mulberry tree. And it was this big when I transplanted it. So that's pretty big to be ripping out of the ground. And I pushed, uh, put it in the ground. I, pull, I took the time to pull up the root system with it. And the roots were like four feet long on each side. And uh, when I transplanted it, I went into plant, transplant shock and uh, dropped its leaves and it's coming back. So you can transplant stuff in the middle of a drought if you get the root system. All right, that's the same cats as before. So don't don't say I have more cats. All right, everybody comments on how many cats I have in my videos. It's the same cats, they follow me around. This is a smaller mulberry tree that I transplanted. It's doing well. This is what I really wanted to show you. This is something that Kim got me off the internet here. This is a Chinese strawberry tree. And it survived the drought and it survived the abuse of me not weeding around it. Look at the leaves, how happy they look. And it's thorny, you know, and this thing's supposed to get really tall, like a, you know, almost as big as a, almost as big as that pecan tree right there is what they're saying. And it puts on strawberry-like fruit. And this one didn't do so well, but it's popping back out. Look at it, you can see the leaves. So that's the Chinese strawberry tree, and I don't know exactly what the variety is. I can't remember. We'll have to look on the receipt, but whatever variety is, is I'm gonna, uh, it's gonna be propagated on this property a lot because it survived the uh, the drought. You can see those ten trees that are dead down there, and these four made it. Obviously, they like acidic soil too because um, this is all sandy soil. If I were to plow this, that's funny, she just runs up in that tree. You having a good day? Yep. She's out of the original bunch. She's probably six years old. Yep. So anyway, it's not about cats. There's some grapes that I planted last year, survived the drought. <clears throat> These might be two years old, I can't remember. That one died, this one made it. So I have one, two, three grapevines left out of six. Here's the peach trees. They're putting on peaches. Um, there's the plum tree. This is what I wanted to show you real quick. Looks like I'm going over 10 minutes. This is a plum tree I got from Bloomers here in Elgin. <clears throat> and it's uh, blooming. But, you know, they have to graft these on rootstock for whatever reason, I guess, for disease resistance or dwarf varieties or however they do it. And the rootstocks popped up. So this is the grafted part. This is the rootstock on the right. And I'm curious to see what type of rootstock this is. I don't really care if it kills the tree. I'd rather the rootstock come up at this point just to see what they're grafting it to. It looks like a peach bloom. So it's going to be interesting. <laughs> I don't think you can graft plums to peaches, but um, I just walked by another dead tree. This uh, pear tree. Uh, 
plum is coming back and I thought it was dead and this one popped out early so and over there are some of the alive peaches the big peach tree died there's a happy little dewberry patch so um, I need to run back in the house there's the suburban and the 80 mo it's an 80 model Chevy and a 91 has nothing to do with springtime except for the fact that I like driving it when I can when it warms up like it is there's a happy little water feature little makeshift water wheel bicycle and spice jars and then looks like this video is going to be about 12 minutes that's all right here's another dewberry patch goes all along the fence here I guess I planted these three years ago and they, they didn't put on at all last year well they did a little bit but um, I'm running water through here constantly this is out of the airlift well to see if my moringa tree my miracle tree will, will handle wet feet and it liked it last year and it's since I've been doing that it's really helped these dewberries to pop out so they can handle wet feet and all this is new dewberry growth since this uh, spring happened <laughs> it's been warm for the last couple of I say three or four weeks I think our last freeze was I guess a month ago but uh, there's the orange tree I took the clippings off of I need to run in the house before there's some more dewberries and here's another water feature you probably saw that one in the first video and here is those beautiful smelling this is some kind of shrub bush that I planted from bloomers years ago and the smell is unbelievable really unbelievable and it just this is the first year it bloomed so that's what happens to a bush when you don't trim it organicmike.com subscribe if you like